cataractcoach.com. Quiz, what does this sign mean? That wrinkling there on the anterior lens capsule. Let me show you. When we start the rexus, we tap and we try to puncture the lens capsule. And as we try to puncture it, there are a lot of wrinkles. And I check all over and there's still a lot of wrinkles. Now we're finally able to poke in and start our rexus. As we complete the capsule rexus, we see that it looks okay. There's enough tension on the anterior lens capsule that it's being held so that we can create the capsular axis. In extreme cases of Zeinler weakness, we may even have to use a second hand or instrument to hold the capsule as the other hand makes the rexus. So this patient certainly has global Zeinler laxity. Not terrible, but there's some. So we'll do hydrodissection after we created that five millimeter capsular axis, and my goal is to get this nucleus out of the capsular bag. There we go, we lifted the nucleus up. This to me is the least stressful position. We'll recoat the corneal endothelium with the dispersive viscoelastic. With the nucleus like this, it's exerting very little force on the Zeinler support system for the eye. So we can buzz into the nucleus, chop it in half, and emulsify it relatively easily. Now, why does this patient have this global Zeinler laxity? There's no trauma, it's not sectoral, it's not in one part, it's all over. And it's not terrible, it's on the mild to moderate degree of laxity there. And so this patient has a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. And this retinitis pigmentosa is known to have issues with zonules being weak. And so what are our options here? Well, we gotta get the cataract out. We wanna make a sufficiently large capsorexis. And the reason is, these patients tend to get capsular phimosis. In most of these conditions, whether it's pseudo exfoliation, red eyes pigmentosa, or some other process, these conditions tend to have more late stage capsular phimosis. The anterior capsular rim shrinks down. So now we're removing the cortex and we watch carefully. You look at the edge of the capsular axis and you make sure that when you're doing the cortex removal, the capsular axis edge isn't moving. If it is moving, that tells you that the zones are being stretched and broken. So you be very careful with that. You don't want to damage them further. So what are the options for this surgery now? We can put, obviously, our single-piece or three-piece lens in the capsule bag. You can also use a capsule tension ring if you'd like. Placing a capsule tension ring may help prevent some of that phimosis. But remember, this is a progressive disease, and it's not just in one sector. So that capsule retention ring will spread out some of the forces and maybe help counteract some of the phimosis. But it's not going to prevent the Zeinler apparatus from getting weaker with time. Now, this patient's relatively elderly, and we're not so worried about the patient's long-term outcome in 10 or 20 years. This patient, we're more concerned with her outcome now and her visual results in the next few years. So delivering our lens in the capsule bag, here we're electing to go without the capsule tension ring. We are going to make sure to clean up the anterior capsular rim undersurface. We don't want to leave too many cells there. We know from previous studies that we've published here in Cataract Coach or reviewed for you that have been published that cleaning that up doesn't necessarily change any of the posterior capsule or anterior capsule pacification, but perhaps it'll play a role in capsule contraction. And so because in this case we're worried about that, we're going to do an extra thorough cleanup of the anterior capsular rim. Another important issue is watching the patient in the post-op period. Patients with retinitis pigmentosa tend to get a higher rate of CME, cystoid macular edema. So keeping the patient on anti-inflammatory medications like steroids and non-steroidals, NSAIDs, is important in the post-op period. Of course, with these patients, you don't want to put in a multifocal or trifocal lens. You want to stick with a monofocal lens to maximize the contrast and the light delivery to the macula. This patient already has significantly constricted visual fields from the retinitis pigmentosa, and we're doing this to primarily help her central visual acuity. So cleaning this up nicely, remember to check the patient in the initial post-op period, the first few months after surgery. 
if there is any anterior capsular phimosis, use the YAG laser and make some relaxing incisions with the YAG laser on the anterior capsular rim, usually just in the four cardinal meridians of 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock is sufficient, and that will help prevent that phimotic ring from forming, and this patient can and will have a very nice visual outcome. So interesting case, next time you see those wrinkles in the anterior lens caps, you know those zonules are pretty weak.